Before hacker groups like Lizard Squad did denial of service attacks against the PlayStation Network over the holiday period to ruin people's Christmas morning, virus writers were crafting ways to make people's festive season less fun via email attacks and trashing people's hard drives. This is the brief history of Christmas themed computer viruses. Doing some research looking through news archives for Christmas-related hacker incidents, I was reminded of the past scourge of seasonal computer viruses. Viruses that are coded to specifically perform an action on a set day or with lures themed around a particular time of year. The days chosen for these viruses to activate were chosen for their symbolism. It could be Hitler's birthday, the anniversary of the Chernobyl disaster, or holidays such as, you guessed it, Christmas. These viruses did varying amounts of damage or caused some inconvenience. Some I suspect are well known because of their theme and the fact that they caught a journalist's eye when discovered by antivirus researchers. The first computer virus I can find was back in 1987, supposedly written by a student at the Klausel University of Technology in Germany. Christmas Tree Exec, as it was called, is described as the first widely disruptive computer worm. It ran on the IBM VM CMS operating system. The worm spread so successfully that it paralyzed many networks in late 1987. It spread via email and forwarded itself to other email contacts infected users had. As described in the Gainesville Sun newspaper on the 19th of April 1988, IBM found a Christmas virus on its in-house electronic mail network. It was a graphic of a Christmas tree that repeatedly reproduced and mailed itself all over the network. So many Christmas trees were being sent that it significantly slowed the network. The messages sent included an ASCII art Christmas tree in the text, a very happy Christmas and my best wishes for the next year. Interestingly, the source code of the virus included comments assuring the curious viewer that it was merely a fun Christmas card and encouraged them to stop reading the code and simply run it to view the card. The subject line of emails that were received as a result of infection included the text, Let this exec run and enjoy yourself. A year later, 1988, the Father Christmas worm struck DeckNet and connected systems running the Vax VMS operating system. Ten minutes after it was released from a system in Switzerland, the worm was detected on the Space Physics Analysis Network, which was NASA's largest space and Earth science network at the time. From a NASA report that was released on investigating the incident. A computer worm is a program that is self-contained and has the ability to propagate itself across a computer network to any idle machine. Unlike a virus, a worm does not modify another program. In the case of the Father Christmas worm, virtually any computer on the DECnet internet could have received a copy of the program. The purpose behind the worm was to send an electronic mail message to all users on the computer system running the worm. The message was a Christmas greeting and was signed Father Christmas. The Father Christmas worm was designed to travel quickly. Estimates are that it was copied to over 6,000 computer nodes. However, it is believed to have executed on only a fraction of those computers. In August of 1999, InfoWorld magazine was warning, Merry Christmas, not if virus writers have their way warning about a newly discovered viral threat similar to the Chernobyl virus, which had hit systems in April of 1999. The new Chernobyl-like threat is set to activate on December 25th. The decidedly unfestive virus is known as Win32.Chris, Win32Chris.3740 or Win32Chris.3862. A memory resident polymorphic virus Win32.Chris replicates under Windows 32-bit systems, Windows 95, 98 and Windows NT and infects portable, executable window program files. Win32.Chris can infect files that are copied, opened and moved according to information on Central Command's website. The virus kills the CMOS memory of any infected system, the memory that stores a computer setup configuration, and overwrites the data in all files on all available drives. On December 25th, the virus destroys the Flash BIOS, using the same routine as found in the Chernobyl virus, Central Command said. The result? users are unable to boot their computers properly or control their cursor. Later in 1999, the Prolissa virus struck, running on Windows. It infected Word documents and emailed itself to contacts with the text, This document is very important and you've got to read this. Opening the document infected the user's system. The virus then triggered when the system date hit, December 25th, and displayed a message. Veni vidi vici, Muslim power never end, you dare rise against me, the human era is over, the cybernet era has come. When the system was next rebooted, the virus would attempt to format the C drive. Finally on the list of Christmas-themed seasonal viruses I'd like to talk about is the Dorf AE worm, also known as the Storm Worm, which hit the internet in Christmas of 2007. 
This was an email spam campaign that arrived with subject lines such as, do you want to see something hot this Christmas? And daddy said, ho ho ho. People receiving the email were encouraged to follow a link to see women dressed in Christmas themed outfits perform a strip show. But anyone going to the website and clicking the link to view the striptease instead received, you guessed it, malware. Seasonal phishing campaigns are still very much a thing. Around tax time, or maybe hitting businesses with attachments claiming to about an office Christmas party or end of year bonus. But I feel like the age of festive viruses that began in 1987 and continued into the 2000s has mostly ground to halt as cybercrime has become more and more about financial gain and less and less about whatever motivated a German student in the late 80s to decide he needed to wish the world a very happy Christmas and best wishes for the next year. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe and share it with people you know who would enjoy it. That's how this channel grows. You can also find Real Hack History on Mastodon and Twitter and some blogs over at realhackhistory.org. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful new year, everyone. Dear Santa, how are you? Oops. Oh. My little brother Joey asked me to write you. He's only five. Here are a few things he hopes he'll bring the family this Christmas. 